On the previous episode, I gave you an overview of my land and how I prepared it for planting. The next step was to build a fence. I was looking for the absolute cheapest way to put up a fence to keep the deer out of my yard. Without a fence, the deer would eat everything and leave nothing for me. I started by buying 45 2 inch pencil post fence posts that are 7 feet long. I identified my property line and started pounding posts in with a sludge hammer standing on top of a ladder. This method worked but it's not the safest way to get the posts in the ground. If you're gonna do this, wait until it rains before putting the posts in the ground otherwise the ground will be too hard. Also put a tin can on top of the post so when you hit it the post won't split. I started each post by rotating them while pulling down which will create a small hole that holds the post in place. I hit each post a few times then I would jump off the ladder to check to see if it was straight then pounded it down until I thought it was close to its final height. After all the posts were in, I went back and tapped each one to try to get the heights to match up to be the same. When spacing the posts, I used one of the posts, which is 7 feet, as my measuring tool to space them out. I had to pull some of the posts out and redo them to work around a gas line and sewer clean out my backyard. After I had a yard full of posts, it was time to roll out the wire mesh. I was super lucky to get two rolls of wire fencing from my neighbor, which saved me around four to five hundred dollars. A similar but cheaper alternative to the galvanized fencing is metal farm fencing which isn't as durable but will keep the deer out. My neighbor helped me roll out and attach the first roll of fencing on my yard. I'd recommend getting someone to help you do this as these rolls of fencing can weigh well over 200 pounds. For the backyard I didn't ask for help and was determined to do it myself. I used a strap from my Olympic rings as a way to get leverage on the roll. Initially I tried rolling it out while it was standing up but this required far too much effort to even move the roll. I ended up tipping it over and rolling it across across the ground until I got to the corner. I decided to cut the roll here as there would be a weird pinch on the fence as it went down the back alley as there is a decent downward slope. I propped up the fence on the ground with a log then used an angle grinder to cut the fence. I should note here you can't cut this fence with tin snips, well not really. I tried, it took me 15 minutes to cut through one bar and then I went out and bought that angle grinder. With the fence being cut, I was able to throw it up against the poles and use zip ties to secure the fence. After the fence was secured with zip ties, I went back with hose clamps around both to keep them held together tight. After I ran out of hose clamps, I secured the last few with some steel wire. If you want to pick some up, both will be linked down below. I rolled out the next section, attached it and did so until I got to the back of the property. After the fence was up, I cut a hole in the fence in the front yard so I could still get my mail. This footage here of me cutting my fence is my first time using an angle grinder. I didn't have a face shield so I improvised with my biking goggles, a medical mask and toque to protect myself against the sparks. After it was cut free, I used some pliers to bend any of these sharp bits back towards the post. Next on my journey of building a food forest in my yard is the construction of the gates and installing deer fencing on top of the fence. Yeah, that's right, the deer can jump over this 7 foot metal fence. Hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you got a good laugh of me trying to figure out how to build a fence. Subscribe if you want to follow my journey and have a great day.